Welcome to another Corgi video tutorial. This time we will be covering sprites and sprite animation. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's have a quick look at the sprite class. As you can see, the sprite class is a direct subclass of image. So anything you can do to an image, you can do to a sprite. With a very important addition, and this addition is that sprites can play sprite animations. Sprite animations are basically flipbooks which rapidly change the displayed bitmap for each animation step. And Corgi offers a convenient way to read and manage these bitmaps. You can just use standard image files which contain all these single bitmaps. These are often referred to as sprite maps or sprite sheets. I already prepared one of these sprite sheets. It's in the resources folder and it's called Explosion. And you can see it's an 8x8 eight eight sprite map with each animation step displayed in one of these virtual rectangles. So let's note we have a sprite map with 8x8 eight eight single sprites, which each represents an animation step. And this sprite map is 1024 pixels times 1024 pixels. This sprite map is a simple PNG file, which we can read like this. Call resources virtual file system with a path, which is explosion.png. And we call read bitmap and we could easily display it sprite map so there is our explosion sprite map which is actually too big for the window this window is 512 by 512 and from here on we can work with this sprite map by extracting all these single sprites and bitmaps into slices let's close this so i can show you how it's done let's create a sprite animation out of this sprite map bitmap call it explosion animation and it is a sprite animation the constructor takes a lot of parameters because we uh, need to be able to configure the sprites we extract very precisely let's start with the source of our sprites that's the sprite map and in this case it's the sprite map we created here Next important parameter is the sprite width, which is actually 128 pixels because we have a whole PNG, which is uh, has a width of 1024 pixels and we have eight sprites. So 1024 divided by eight is 128. And the sprite height is also 128. The next two parameters are the margins because sometimes the sprites may not be on the very borders of the sprite map. So it's margin top. In this case, it's zero. Actually, margin top has the default value of zero. So I would not need to specify it here. But for the sake of this video, I will just put these parameters in here with these values zero and zero. Next thing I have to specify are how many sprites are in the rows and how many sprites are in the columns. So I define eight columns and eight rows. And another thing I can specify an offset between the columns because sometimes maybe the sprite maps are not like tiles stacked above or next to each other but there are some pixels in between so I can specify an offset. The default value of offset is zero so I would not have to specify these here either but let's just specify them here to have a complete constructor call. So that's basically it for my explosion animation. Now I can change this image to a sprite and call sprite but now with the explosion animation as the single parameter for the constructor. And now this sprite holds a sprite animation, which is basically a stack of bitmaps, which we can flip through by the provided play animation function. So let's do it. Sprite.playAnimation. We can see now that this animation is played one time. Actually, there are some hidden parameters which you can use like times is two will be played two times now we 
you can even play it looped if you want it's not a function call it's play animation looped so it just plays forever but we can specify other parameters like the sprite display time which is the time the engine waits between each animation step so let's make it 500 milliseconds and see how it looks so after each step it waits 500 milliseconds this can be used to slow down animations so let's remove this i can show you another parameter you can even play it reversed or you can specify reversed and another parameter like the start frame maybe you don't want to start at zero you want to start at frame six maybe the animation starts at a later frame so all these parameters work for each of these play animation functions there is play animation looped there is play animation and there is play animation for duration where you can specify how long it should play let's make it one second so, and then it stops so all parameters work on each of these three play animation functions Corgi also provides three events which will be called during the lifetime of uh, animation so you have sprite dot on animation completed, on animation started, and on animation stopped. So the difference between on animation completed and on animation stopped is you can actually stop animations with sprite stop animation. This will call the on animation stopped and the on animation completed will only be called when actually the animation go through all of its frames it has and on animation started declares itself so we hope you have fun with our sprite animations and keep posted for some more tutorial videos.